Hello, my name is Rachel, and today I'm going to do Baby Blues. Baby Blues is a comic book straight back in 1995 and still going on today. And why Baby Blues become a cartoon? Well, duh, it's popular. But of course, Baby Blues is one of those kind of unique comic book strips. It's because how it was it's how the first family has a first baby and how they deal with it. And basically, that's how it goes, at least the first couple of issues. After that, they added more siblings and like Hammy and the daughter. But all those, they don't count right now because they only focus on the cartoon, only in Zoe. So yeah, I'm not gonna talk about them. Why they make this comic book street so special is because they actually age up of the characters. I mean, the first time you read this comic book strip and you go on for uh, so many years, the characters change. I don't mean uh, how they act, in fact, how they look. They actually are aging at a certain point. They stop doing that for a little while. Now, because this comic book story is so unique and interesting, they decided to make it a cartoon series back in 2000, and it was interesting. The show created by Rick Carmen and Jerry Scott. Now, the animated series was interesting because it was one of those shows that usually a comedy series, especially when based on comic book strip, takes a lot of work. I mean, usually it fails or sort of be okay or be very successful like Garfield the anime series, but it's something that is kind of different medium, basically, because a comic book strip have one strip or the fact maybe have like a series less than five days out of the week. And even that combined all together still not enough to make a full episode. So you can see this was a series of trial and error because honestly, the show has the talent. I mean, it really shows they know what they're doing, but it's something first they tried in the anime series. It really shows this like the first episode you see, it's good, it's interesting, it's relatable. But if you see the second episode, you were like, yeah, you did something wrong. I think the only problem is the whole series was a uh, cliche in the fact the characters, everything they do in the comic book series are cliche but relatable. And the question is how you make that cliche relatable but interesting at the same time. And the show deal with this hand in hand. The anime series started in 2000 and kind of filmed in the channel CW but the only problem is it wasn't that successful, it lasted a season and a half-ish and decided to cancel it and the rest of the series led until adults went to finish the whole series completed. Now, watching this series, it was interesting because you do notice that people who wrote this show, they didn't have enough experience to make it an animated series. I mean, the animation is great and there's no, no doubt about it, it's simple, fluent and perfect. The only part is how you write the show are basically cliche characters. But it's the difference of this the comic book strip is how they execute the cartoon. Everything they dialogue, how they move, how they say it. It was mm, eh. I mean some episodes are really good. Like the first episode, how they it kind of explode the idea of how to raise a baby or how to raise a child. And you see Daryl trying to figure out how to raise this infant. You see basically kind of like the people next door of Michael in the middle, wild and crazy, that very erratic. And you can see how they're not equal. I mean, in fact, his family is smart, well educated, and they are kind of violent and harsh. So you could wonder, oh, we could be a better family, but you realize not, or can we? Because the day show do explore that it's no wrong way to raise a child. The fact that we explore each character, how different they are, like how to explore a home mom, how she feels just sticking with this child all day. I mean, you drive you crazy. Give a lot of different opinions or, or different respects of a character. Then you realize, wow, this is sort of deep and interesting and relatable. But then once more, it's the execution. And they don't really do that all the time, especially the first season. I mean, every time there's a good episode, it's a bad episode. A good episode and a bad episode. That's usually the first season. The second season, they realize what they did wrong and they try to fix that in the second season. But the only problem is an attack too late. No, this series has a lot of characters. I mean, quite a few characters. I mean, wow. But the interesting part is they only focus on the least main group of people. In the fact, the two families live side to side. Our main family is basically Daryl and Wanda and the baby Zoe. I do mention they used to have uh, two more kids in the comic book, 
but decided to erase this too for right now and just focus on Zoe and the parents and how they give grace. You have another family next door called Carl and Manila. They are ghetto. I mean, Carl and Manila are kind of like a bad chemistry, but the way they sort of work. The fact, in my opinion, they're the most interesting family next to Gary and Wanda. They're interesting, but I like the ghetto family better because they're more interesting, they're more erratic. Uh, I feel the show would be more interesting if they have a lot of conflict. And their family, the ghetto family, they have a lot of conflict. They have no control, they have issues, and they made it more fascinating. But it's not our main family. Our main family is Daryl and Wanda, and they are still interesting, but not as equally interesting in the other characters. But they have their points. They have, for example, how Wanda, the city home mom, that she can't get tired of this, she want to get out, she want to do something, and she is kind of in a midnight crisis. She doesn't know what she wants. You have Daryl, that he is a nerd. And one of those nerds that got lucky, find this girl, they are married, have kids. And he really doesn't know how to handle certain sort of things. For example, how, how to raise a child. And that more interesting that he really was afraid to have the same issue what he had was growing up. Being bullied, being too weak, being this too much. So it really kind of interesting how he over exaggerates the things and overthinks the things that you realize, should I raise this this way or should I raise her that way? The most interesting is how the relationship between Daryl and Carl because they have this Kind of like, yeah, who's the superior kind of daddy, who's the best, who's this, who's that. And I love to have very different perspectives on their own. One's very educated, one is the gardener who doesn't get that much money. But I love that I play with this idea because sometimes uh, the one who has doesn't have a good job, who does not graduate the high school, who has a better paying job than the guy who's actually educated. And I don't know you, if I'm in that position, I do get wondering, yeah, what I did in my life, why I went to college. And that is so interesting because you do feel that. Because there's sometimes that guy in the corner who has no business working in a certain place and he doesn't have an education, he doesn't have a diploma, and he has a really well paying job. And you work so hard, you don't get it. So, yeah, it's one of those things you kind of wonder what I did wrong. And that's what's so interesting about Baby Blues. You're always trying to figure out a way to question these things. In fact, everything they do each episode, they're always trying to explore a character. Now our ghetto family, our secondary family, is basically a car on the left. Carl is one of those characters that kind of merely have to take your own family, I know what's best, but you try not to be open and that's one of the main flaws of the character and they made it more interesting that she's trying to voice be sensitive and that's the wrong problem, the wrong way to take it. But you like about that about Carl, you think he's no better but no, he, that's why he one of the major flaws. But Melinda is care but she does love her family and she kind of an alcoholic mom that she tries to control the family, screams at them, also trying to explain Carl what to do next. They try to evolve the relationship next level. And that's it's interesting because Carl is not an open character and he really is. And that's make the conflict more interesting, more chemistry about the both characters. And you see why the two characters love each other. Not like the main family, they do love each other, but they really don't have conflict that much. They have issues, how we take this, how we take care of this, how we move this, how we work. They take it more like a paranoid family than a first time family. This is the perfect thing about the big family. It's just the first thing. And the ghetto family are more interested. They're more experienced. They have more issues. To me, that's the reason why I like them more than the main family. I mean, the whole characters are good. You also have all the siblings called Ronnie and Megan. And you have a third sibling, but he really doesn't talk, but he's, he's gangster. He will hurt you. Okay, Ronnie he is kind of like an asshole kid who does things what he wants when he wants it. But it's one of the characters that you can't control. But he has like kind of funny one liners or things that I didn't break the rules uh, situation. But one of those things that test the limits of the rule breaking that you just laugh your ass off. You have Megan that she is kind of like a comic right handed man rotten. So she does a little bad things with him or support him whatever he does. But usually she's not the bubbly character, but she's one of those that she adds to Rodney. The sinister things he does. I mean, he's not a bad character. He is just how he was raised around his whole family. And they made it more interesting and kind of relatable because you've seen kids like him who has very awful parents, but you can see this kid has potential. You also have, uh, 
You also have another character called Lizzie, babysit Zoe. The babysitter, she is basically a cliche. I mean, all the class, all the characters are cliche, but she is like kind of like teen. I mean, they don't explain what age she is. She's like college or still high school. It's, they never explain what age age she is, but she's one of those characters that she acts like a teenager or a young adult, basically. But the thing is, she mean points are usually just making fun of things or point point of things that mean doesn't make sense. She's of course she's the one who kind of helps open Wanda's eyes once in a while to be up there. She's a very flawed character because she is still a teenager. I think I mean not a teenager, I mean a young adult college student. Once more, they never specific her age in this series. So yeah, our final character would be Kenny. How to describe Kenny? It's basically describing Barney for How I Met Your Mother. I mean, it's almost exact clone, except he has three kids. And he's kind of childish, he likes to annoy people, he, he's an asshole who has a lot of luxuries. Yeah, but you will hate him, you like him, and you like him every time it pops out of nowhere. It's like he has his own thing. Baby Blues is one of those series that is a kind of hit and miss series. Because every time they do good, uh, good something, good, uh, good, 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 sorry, my brain's for us over a second. Good episode, every time you see that, oh, that's actually an interesting point, oh, that's interesting concept they went through but the next time you see the next episode it was kind of weak and pathetic because there's one reason is the characters are generic they really don't stand out on much they have a good personalities but they're not interesting at all well my conclusion of this series is was interesting fun and unique because usually like Funny guys the Simpsons, the claim you show american dad they avoid the main problem of the characters and never explore them and maybe uh, baby blues do explore the characters like why uh, like a mom has to stay at home maybe they want to go work get do something or why other families are better off than ours but ours are more beneficial we have money we have everything but we're still merciful and they actually explore different views of that it made it more interesting but the only part is the execution and ruins this season one because they are cliche they follow the cliche uh, rules so yeah it's kind of hard to avoid them without being so creative that's the only thing is kind of drags this show is is need a little bit more polish but other than that everything else by the characters they're charming likable a little bit cliche once in a while but they fix that longer the show lasts and it feels they really tried to deliver something entertaining. And that's the thing. Try. They want you to be happy. They want you to feel this to be a good show. And they sort of worked in season two. Sally got cancelled before its time. That I wonder if it given more time, like a third or fourth season, probably be a perfect show. Better than Family Guy, The Simpsons, American Dad, or any type of adult family show. And this series was that. It was this close, this minimum close to make it polished perfect. Sadly, it didn't have the time or the fan base enough to keep it up for a couple more seasons. All of that, the show has to have issues, but it's still watchable. I highly recommend to watch it because it's one of those, yes, you must watch at least a couple episodes. It only have to give here or there. Now, my recommendation of this rating show will be uh, on this likable six, positive six, something that I still recommend to watch. Just if you don't like an episode, just skip it. The next episode will be way better kind of situation and you just enjoy it. I got nothing else to say. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Bye.